Rabbi Quinn from Torvadas. Yeah. It also is Quinn. Quinn's an Irish name. Right. That, that he was given that name. Family was given the name of that was Island. His name saying was Cohn. Cohn, the Kohanim. The Quins yeah. are all Kohanim. Cohn, Cohn, Quinn. No, I understand, but Quinn. Name Kohanim. Cohn is Quinn. So he called him Quinn. No. Okay. We left off where the Gemara had said that the reason why if two shluchim are given money to pay a chov, a debt, to the Malve, the reason why they believed were there's no negius, they're not considered that they're no gebedover and the qualified witnesses because they have a migu, right? The migu is, they could say we gave the money to the lender, paid the debt, because we could have said we returned the money to the borrower, right? As even easily, if we would have been dishonest, we, and they have no problem. But the Gemara says, but after they were they legislated true assessors, so then they're not believed any longer. Why? Because they have to, if they would say they returned the money to the to the borrower, they have to take a shvua. So they would prefer to say that they gave the money to the lender, rather so they they no longer have a migu. Right, so we mentioned Tosis. Tosis says, so let them take the shvua, let them take the oath that they d that they gave the money, and then they'll believe it as witnesses. So Tosis says, when Torah says, "Alpishnai made him yakum dover," the testimony has to be taken face value. If you need anything else to validate the witnesses, that's not what that's not edus in the Torah. Therefore, they're not qualified. No, 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 no. The oath. No, no, they're not swearing they returned the money. They take the oath that they gave the money. They gave the money. They gave the money. So, so we're showing the oath is not the issue over here. So if we, would, if we truly would have given the money back, we would have taken the oath to give it back. So it's not we prefer to say this, because we're showing we're taking the oath. So the oath, so once we take the oath, we're not no gay any longer. So now why are we accepting your testimony now? Because you took the oath. So what's validating? What's giving credibility to the edus? The shvur. The Cheskis Kashrus has to give you has to give you the validity. That's what has, has to validate the testimony. Nothing else. And if it's anything else, that's not Edus. That's what Tosa says. But I just want to get back to one point. Tosa asks the question, but on the Migu. On the Migu, yes, he says the the Mishnah says in Ksubis that if you want to substantiate a star, star, and you have to if you bring the witnesses who signed, and they say, it is our signature, and they say, you know, it's true, it's our signatures, but he threatened our lives, that's what we signed. They believed. This document is invalidated. What about if they say, and we were paid off, he bribed us. They're not believed. Why aren't they believed? Because they were incriminating themselves. They say, look, we accept the bribe to sign falsely, they're not believed. So Tosin says a question. It stays, it stays, it stays. No, not, it's not substantiated. It's not substantiated. It's not substantiated. But now we have to, but if the document is not destroyed. If they say, Anusim Achim Stavoshis, you destroy the document. But here, this document, so we'll find other way to substantiate the document. They're not believed. Okay, so I'm not getting Tosis and Ksubis. No, you can't. Can't, not. So, I, I don't just want to digress over here. I just want to focus on what we're talking about. So Tosa has a question over there. Believe them that there are new Samachmas Momon, even though Mesa Matsum Rosho. I can't believe what you create. They have amigo. Believe us that we were we were paid off. We could have said Machmas the Foshos. Right? We have amigo. So Tosa says that you're so it says a principle that we deal with two people, you don't say amigo. Because who said the other person would have thought about what the other person would have thought about? You deal with one person, you say he would have thought about something. But to say that two people would have thought about the same thing, we don't say that. That's, that's, that's what Tosa's answers. And Tosa over here brings it. Tosa has a question. It's a case over here. It says, before they legislated Shua Sessis, they would have been believed. Why would have been, they have been believed? Because they have a migu. Why are they not Nogea Bedover? Because if they wanted to absolve themselves from the Lova, they could have said, we returned the money to the Lova. They have amigo. Therefore, they believe to say they pay the malve, right? That's why they're not no gebeidos. Therefore, they have no conflict of interest there. Stosis, but we're dealing with two people. We have a principle. We 
proven from the Gemara, from the Mishnah in Ksubas and the Gemara that when we deal with two people, we don't, we don't say the principle of Migu. So why over here the Gemara says clearly we do say Migu? Or I mentioned another, the Gemara says in, uh, in, in Baba Basra, if you have Trey, Tre, you have contradictory testimony, neither are believed, because we don't know who to believe, and you leave it status quo. Tosa says, the latter Adim who come, they should believe Uramigu. Believe us that we're telling the truth, because we could have said that the first ones who testified, they were gotten off him. We could have invalidated them. So believe us that what we're saying is true, because we could have invalidated the first witnesses by saying they're Gazlonim. So Tos, one of the answers Tos gives, of course, we're dealing with two, with two, dealing with, with two people. We deal with two people. Who said one would have thought about what the other one would have thought about? Therefore, it remains tray with tray. You don't say migu within the context of two witnesses. Same, same answer. So how do you answer this? So Tosa's answer here says something very interesting. In all the cases where we don't say migu, when you deal with two people, we say, who said one would have thought of what the other one would have thought of? But over here, both these people were given money to deliver money. So they're both on the line for money. That's what they want. When it comes to what we call Gerard de Mona, where it's going to question, there's a question of a financial loss, people think on the same lines. Over there, it's a question, I'm a, an objective party. I'm telling you, I signed, but it's not relating to them personally. Right? But they say we were forced, we were, we were enticed through a bribe, or we, we, our lives were threatened, or whatever the case is. Believe my testimony because I could have disqualified the first group of witnesses. It's not relating to them personally. Here there's a drawer de Mamona. Here, if we have to say something, otherwise we're going to have to pay out of our own pockets. We're going to have to pay. Where's the money? Did you, did you pay the debt? Did you return the money? So since over here there's a financial issue, that both of them think this on the same lines, therefore we say Migu, even though I'm dealing with two people. One second. I want you to understand what this far is. There's a difference. Just to bring it out, Rabbi Yonitz Neibshitz wanted to say called Urim Vitumim. It's not Kosher Mishpat. Urim Vitumim. Because he's known as the Tumim. Rabbi Yonitz Neibshitz's level of genius is beyond, beyond, beyond <coughs> the type of genius he was. What's Migo? Migo means, believe me on this, because I could have said something else. So, he has a Migo over there. You have to be a Rabbi Yonitz Neibshitz to come up to think about what he could have said. If somebody wants to ask Rabbi Yonitz Neibshitz, if you have a, an ingenious mind, believe me on this, because I could have said something else. But you could have only said that if you're a genius. But if you have an ordinary mind, why is it amigo? That's the question they ask Rabbi Yonitz Neibshitz. So Rabbi Yonitz Neibshitz says, when it comes to money, everybody becomes a genius. <laughs> That's what he answered. When there's a conflict of interest, you come up with ways to say, see things you can't believe. Right? That, I'm, I'm serious. That's what he said. Because what negius, when you have a conflict, what you're able, you apply yourself, you become very creative. You come up with many things. So I'm bringing up the same thing. When there's a drawer de Mamona, here they were given money. Either you give money to pay the creditor. If you didn't pay the creditor, that means you had to return the money to the, to the what? To the borrower. To the debtor. Where's the money? Believe us, we paid because we could have said we returned it. And if you didn't, what, what is, what, what's going to be the end of the day? You have to pay yourselves. When it comes to, you have to pay. They both think on the same lines. Same kind of concept. No, 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 no. I independently, they think the same thing. Therefore, believe us that we paid because we, we could have said that. It's interesting. There's a famous tosis on that Beis Amadalov in Bav Metziah. Shnei Mosem Betalus. Shnei Mosem Betalus. Zoma Kula Shali, Zoma Kushali. Each one claims it's all his. So it says Yahloku. They divide with a Shvua. What about if one says Kula the other one says Chetzi Shali? One says it's 50% is mine. And the other one says, the other it says one gets a quarter, one gets three quarters. Stosis asks, the one who says 50% is mine, he should believe with Amigo. Believe me that 50% is mine, because I if I would have said it all is mine, then it would have gotten 50%. So I said, 50% if I'm being honest. So well, give me 50%, why do I only get a quarter? That's Tosa's question. Famous question. Right? How old were you? How old were you? Ten years old when you learned that. I don't know if you learned Tosa's. But the, the famous Tosa's question. Tosa's answer is a phenomenal answer. That we don't say migu lahotzi. Over there, it's a, since they're both holding on to the talus, so if we give one 50%, that means through the migu I'm extracting 
an extra quarter from the other person. Because Torah says, Alpish and I made him Yakum Dover. You can only extract money with what? With, with, with Edim. You need hard evidence. Migu was not sufficient to extract money from, from a person. What? It's, a, it's defense to retain money. But to extract, you can't. Therefore, Migu, that's called Migu Lotzi. Migu Lotzi lo Amidim. But Tosa says, what about it's a Migu di Boy Shosik? Let's say the person has a Migu. I'll give you an example. The example we had the Mishnah in, in, uh, in, in Ksubis. A person comes and says, what are you doing in my field? My boy, my boss, Bayara, what are you doing in my field? The man says, I bought it from you. I bought it from you. You gave it to me as a gift. That's what the occupier says to the man who has the claim. Okay? So the man says, do you have a, a deed? He says, I have no deed. Oh, yeah, three years? No. Do you have witnesses? No. But the one who's making the claim, he doesn't have witnesses that he's the Morikam, that he was the original owner. Does not have witnesses. So although we have, we know that a person holds on to a document for three years before it goes lost, nevertheless, because he has a migu, he has a migu, so what's the migu? The migu is, he could have said, he could have just remained silent, just ignored the man. The man comes without any evidence that he's original only, he just could have ignored him, right? So because I could have, that's called migu di boy shosik. I could have remained silent. If I would have remained silent, what would have been? Right? I'll give you an example. Another case, migu di boy shosik. The Mar says in, in Bava Basra, a person comes with a substantiated document. It's called the Shtar Makuyim. Yeah? Comes with it to collect the debt. The so-called borrower is ranting, raving, screaming, it's a forgery. Forgery. So what is the court? The man comes with a document that's substantiated by the court. The man can rant and rave from today forever. The man has to pay. Right? He has a, a Shtar Makuyim, a substantiated document. So the person who comes with the document, he whispers into the, into the ear of the night, he says, no, the truth is, it is a forgery. But I had a real document. It went lost, but I know who I'm dealing with. So I had the document, first class forgery done. So he has a migu. He has a migu. So it says, so it's a machloks whether you collect with the migu or not. With the migu. So Tosin says, how do you collect with the migu? Because if he would have remained silent, the judge would have let the man rant and rave. He's collecting. He has the document. Right? If he, of course, he says, look, if I would have been dishonest, I could have kept quiet. It's because I'm honest. I reveal to the judge that it's a forgery. I should lose my money. I'm clear. I have amigo. I'm honest. Satosis asks, but it's amigo lahutzi. The only reason why he's able to extract money from the borrower is because he has this amigo. Without he wouldn't. We say amigo lahutzi lo amrino. With amigo, you cannot extract money. That we see from the Mishnah in Bav Mitzi and that base, right? That's Tosas Kasher. Tosas answers because Migu di Boy Shosik. He doesn't have to come up with. He has, doesn't have to think about anything. Here it's just remaining silent. Look, I have the document. The document has the force I collect. You can rant and rave and scream from now forever. You're paying the debt. So right. So that's Migu di Boy Shosik. When you don't have to think about something, it's just blatantly clear. That has the force of almost, that's, that's, that's evidence. That's equivalent evidence. I, I could collect with that. No, even though it's Lahotzi, even though it's a Migu, we, through the Migu you're extracting money, but since you don't have to think about anything, therefore, therefore it's, it's not a problem. So what, what do you have to say? If you have to think about something, there's always a question, who said you would have thought about it, right? There's always that element. Because there's always that element, who said you would have thought about it? That weakness, that minimizes the evidence. It doesn't have the force to extract money. So it comes out where, hold it from shot. The way we explain normally, is because Torah says, Apish and I made him Yaakov Dover. You cannot extract money anything less than testimony. Correct? You can't extract anything less than testimony. So if that's the case, we shouldn't differentiate whether it's a Migul, whether it's Migid Shosik or not a Migid Shosik. Whether remaining silent would have been enough, or you have to come up with something. Either way, you can't. Factually, Migu was not Edus. So you see, it's a whole different understanding. The reason Migu lo Tzulamina is because there's a certain element of doubt. Who said you would have thought of that other taina? Who said you would have thought of that other claim? There is that element of question. The Migu be you don't have to think about anything. 
I have a document, hardcore evidence, substantiated document. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't, whatever you would say, you have to pay. It's only because I revealed there because there's no deficiency in the Migu. There's not a question in the Migu. Therefore, the Migu has the ability to extract money. So I'm just saying, making the comparison with the two people. When I have two people, there's always that element of question. Who said one would have thought about what the other one said? Therefore, that is a deficiency in the Migu. Being a deficiency in the Migu, it has no value. Therefore, we don't apply the principle of Migu. But we're saying, what about if there's a drawer of the Mamona where they were given money and there's a question they'd, they'd have to, if they don't ha come up with a good reason, there's going to be outlay from their own pockets because they have to reimburse the, the, the borrower, then they both think on the same level. They would have said, we returned it. Believe us, we're honest that we gave the money to the lender because if we would have been wanting to be dishonest, we could have said we gave it back to the borrower. This is pre shrua no, it's pre the oath. This is before they legislated the shrua Once they legislate the oath, they're not believed. They're not believed any longer. They're not believed. They have to take the shrua And they're not believed. That we said, this is what we said, they both have to pay. There's only one, in each case, there's only one migo. It's the same migo. not going to help because they're witnesses. They have to be saying the same thing. They both have because we're dealing with Aiden. Right? It's like you interrogate witnesses. Each one gives a different reason and you know there's a problem. Okay. Let's go further. The Mishnah says, Ish Makadosh is Bito. A father is able to marry his daughter, whether she's a Katana or a Nara, right? Once she's a Bulgarian, once she's fully mature, father, she's, she's left the father's domain. Now, it's interesting. You know, we have, we have a principle that the Torah says that a father can marry his daughter even if she's a minor. Even if she's a minor. But the Gemara, the Mish, the Gemara said that, that because it says, Bahafto Recho Kamocha, the father should not marry his daughter when she's a minor. Of course, when she becomes an ad adult, she may protest. But a Nara. She's fully mature. He can marry her off. He can marry off his daughter. Okay? So, um, this is Espiti Nosat Lishazer. Father has the ability on the Torah level. The marriage is a Torah marriage. Let's see if father marries his daughter off when she's a katana, a minor. And, but there's only Ersin. Right? You have two. You have Ersin and you have Nesuin. Meaning, she did not fully leave the domain of the father. Erison, she's still partially in the domain of the father. Subsequently, she's divorced after Erison. What's the aloha? She returns to the domain of the father. She's fully reinstated the domain of the father. We have... Because she didn't fully leave. She didn't fully. We have, we have, in, regarding the Dorim, a woman makes a nether during when she's, an, when she's a, a katana. She's 11 years old or 12 years old. Okay, she makes a netter, so she's still in the domain of the father. The father can nullify the netter. It's called hafara, hafara snadorim. Father says whether she is agreeable, not agreeable, the, she's in the domain of the father, the father nullifies the netter. Let's say she makes a netter after Erison. So now she's partially in the domain of the husband and still in the domain of the father. It has to be done jointly. Both the father and, and the husband within 24 hours of the netter, or when they become aware of the netter, the netter has to be nullified. If not, the netter is in place. Okay? Because that's called the shutfim, the partners. What happens if the husband divorces the, his wife after Erison? She fully returns to the domain of the father. Now, if she makes a netter, the father nullifies the netter, independent of anybody else. Okay? What happens if there's Erison and eventually there's Nesuin? The father marries off his daughter. Father has to be agreeable that she goes to Chuppah. The Chuppah takes place, and then subsequently the husband divorces his wife. She's still a Nara, or she's a Ketano. What's the Aloha? She, 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 she's fully, she left the domain of the father. And now what happens? Now let's say 
Could anybody marry? And she, let's see, she's a katano. Could anybody marry her off now? On a Torah level, her marriage cannot be a Torah marriage unless she's an adult. But rabbinically, they're what they say: the father or the brothers, or the father or the mother, if they choose to marry her off, it's kedushin <coughs> rabbanon. Right? P to protect her, otherwise they, she'll be she'll be uh, molested. She'll be taken advantage of. Somebody has to take responsibility. So it's called kedushin rabbanon. Okay. So now we're going to discuss this. The Mishnah says, Ish Mekadosh is Bito. Tanan Hosan. We learned the Mishnah in Gitten. Nara Morosan. We're talking about Nara. What's a Nara? She's, tw she's an adult. Nara is 12 years old. Puberty. Years and puberty. If she's 12 without puberty, she's still considered a minor. She's a Katana. She has puberty without years. She's 12 and a half years old. 12 and a half. Six months after 12 years old, she has puberty. She's out of the domain of the father. She's a fully mature woman. Okay? A son is never in the domain of the father. Ever. Even as, even as a minor is not in the domain of the father. Right. Okay? Tanan Nara Moroso. A Nara, she's 12 years old, she's an adult, and she's Moroso. Okay? That means she wasn't fully married. She did not leave the domain of the father. Hivo via Makabna is Gito. Now the husband wants to divorce her. He could give the get either to her or the father, and she's Mugureshis. She's divorced. Omar Avyuda, so Avyuda in the Mishnah over there says, he disagrees. One person, you only have one married woman. One person cannot have more than two hands. You don't have two hands representing one person. El Ovio Mekables Gito. The only one who's qualified to receive the get is what? Is the father. She's not qualified to receive the get. Who, who is the Bala Kedushin? Who married her? The one who married her is the one who receives the divorce. So therefore, only the father is qualified to receive the divorce. Because he, because he, she's still in his domain. Right? To the degree that she's married, she's in his domain. Right? Proof, if she's divorced, she returns to his domain. If she's in the Sioux, of course, she receives it because she's left his domain. So she's independent of the world. V'chol sheni chol lishmar es gito. What about she's a minor and the father receives the get and she cannot... She has no, doesn't even understand. If, if the father receives the get, she returns to the man as if she's the man's wife. She doesn't even, ha, doesn't even understand what Gershon is. Even if the father should receive the get, she's not, she's not divorced. The marriage is not terminated. So Rashi cites a Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Because Rabbi Yitzchok he cites the pasuk, I feel like they are via the shaiti. Abba Rabbi Yitzchok shilchu mi beiso, misha mishalch ve'ino chozeres. When he sends her off, she doesn't come back. Yotzer zu she mishalch ve'ino chozeres mesachus yivomus. Right? Let's see, she's unstable. An unstable woman you can't give a get to because she, she she's totally unstable. You tell her to to disappear, she doesn't disappear. She comes back. It says v'shilchu mi beiso. She has to be able to process what, what, what the event that's happening. Okay, that's, it's irrelevant, that part. Now, now we have a question. So we have a machlokas rebut in the Chachomim in regard to get. The Chachomim say that not only could the father receive the get, she can receive the get. Rebut says not only the father can receive the get. She does not have the capacity to receive the get. Okay? Which means the father didn't make her a shliach. If the father would make her a shliach, then of course she's she's the equivalent of the father. Here she's accept, accepting the get. No, Nara, Nara, Nara. She's an adult. Here she's accepting the get independent of the father. Not a shliach, not shliach for her own get. She is her own person. She's the married woman. Definitely, of course. Definitely, why not? According to Rabbi of course. She is the, because she's the father now. Gorim Yudah, she can't, cannot receive the get. Because, oh, it says, Ein shtei yodayim lechot. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, according to Rabbi Yudah, she, she's not qualified. The father would make her a shaliach. That she's representing him. A, a, an adult could be an agent. She is the agent of the father. 
No, 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 no. Okay? Definitely. It's not a problem. Gender is irrelevant. Even for, like, Kedusha, Kedusha? Even for Kedusha. Right, correct, 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 correct. Omri Shlokish. Omri Shlokish. So says a Chidush. So we have a Machlokis between Reb Yudin and the Chachomim in regard to marriage, in regard to get. How many people could receive the get? So the Tanakhapa says the father and the daughter. Reb Yudin says only the father. Omri Shlokish ki Machlokis the Gershin, kach Machlokis the Gedushin. As they argue in regard to Gershin, they argue in regard to Kedushin. Let's say the daughter, independent father, wants to receive Kedushin without the father's permission. Rish Lokish says that according to the Chachomim, she can. She's an adult. She has a mind of her own. She's able to marry herself off without permission of the father. Rabbi Yochanan, no. Machlok is Gershin. The Machlok is Rabbi Yochanan is only regard to receiving the get. Does she have a capacity of Kedushin? Only the father can marry her off and not herself. She cannot marry herself off. So we'll say. So Rabbi Yochanan says there is no argument regarding Kedushin, regarding Nara. Only the father can marry her off. What's the rationale? Why should we differentiate between Kedushin and Gitin? So it's interesting. According to Rish Lakish, Rashi says, we have, it says, V'yotzev hois l'shachir. No, we, we have a hekish, like we said earlier. We're makish, kedushin to gerushin. As regard to gerushin, right, you would say two people can. So regard to kedushin, two people can. That's rish lokish. No, which means you, you apply the same yardstick. Both. Rabbi Yochanan differentiates. What's, what, why does he differentiate? Why, according to the Chachamim, although by Gershon we say two people are qualified to receive the get, but in regard to Kedushin, she is not qualified to marry herself off. My time, Rabbi Yochanan, leave it to Rabbi Yochanan. Gershon, the Machnes, is Atzim, the Shusa, Vio, Ben Hibeno, Vio. Right? When a woman is divorced, what happens to her? Mina Erison. She returns to the domain of the father. She is an Arab. Once she's in the sua, once she, once she's a bogeris, there's nothing. The father's out of the picture, right? We're talking. She's narrow. She's still within the domain of her father, okay? Because gershin the machnes is atzmon the rishus avio. She's what? She's returning to the domain of her father. So therefore, bein he bein avio. Therefore, they're both qualified. Kedushin the mafkas atzmon the rishus avio. She's actually she's what? She's extricating herself from the father's domain. How can she extricate herself from father's domain? So, unless the father wants her. Or even though he, therefore, who's the only one who's qualified to marry her off? It's only the father, not herself. One second. So let's take a look at Rashi. He says something interesting. Gershin, three lines from the bottom. Gershin the Machnes is Atzim Kabbalos Gitu Shus Avi Amrin Do Avi Nami Necholei Shet Kabbal He. The father wants her. It's the agreement that she should receive the get. Why? The Necholei Listav Lehi Vabi Gito. Why is he agreeable? Because she's returning to his domain. Right through her accepting the get. Right, she's he he's gaining. Now again, she's reinstated in his domain fully. But by Kedushin, he's losing her. He's losing. Until now, he has full control over her. her. Now, it's divided between herself and the husband. Okay. The husband has to pay the ksuba. <coughs> father, let's, what, what about she works? Her earnings. Who gets her earnings? The father gets the earnings. There's a husband. They divide it. Right? Even though the Harrison doesn't get it because until she's willing to good. No, 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 no. The husband wants to divorce her. They they've been through through all kinds of uh, reconciliation, right? They went to marriage counseling. It's not, it's not working. So now, now he's so no, so he, this is in his interest that she should be fully reinstated in his domain. Kedushin, he's losing control. So unless he agrees or he, okay. So now, so the Gemara asks a question. 
Now, if a woman is a Yavoma, right? You have a case, a Naro. She was married, originally married off by the father, only heiress in Kedushin. During the year, during, with, after two months after she's married, her husband dies. So she has no children, right? And now there's a surviving brother. She's, she's a Yavoma. Let's say the surviving brother rather than, than actually doing Yibum, which is cohabitation, he gives him money. No, he gives him money. In presence to witnesses, Hare Mugadesh asleep. That's called Mimer. Mimer. Right? Because what he's supposed to do is consummate it. Right? Cohabitation. It says, Yivom Yovu Aleho. Right? Once he, Yivom Yovu Aleho, she's fully married to him. But instead of that, he gives a Kedushin. I'll give you an example. If you have multiple brothers, and one of the brothers wants to lock it in, see, see, so what does he do? He gives her the presence to witnesses. Harei Mukdeshitli, she accepts it. So any other brother now cannot do Yibim any longer. She's reserved for him. She's reserved for him. But the question is, how, according to Rabbi Yochanan, that a Naro cannot accept marriage without permission of the father, as we'll see in a moment, why in regard to the Yivama, can she accept marriage, accept the Kedushin, without the father? See, see, she is capable. Just as by Gidden, according to the Chachamim, she's qualified to receive the Get. By Maimer, by Yivoma, she's qualified to receive the Kedushin. So what? It's not the Zik. We're talking about the Kedushin is recognized. The Kedushin is recognized. Okay. Let's say the father wanted another one of the other surviving brothers. He didn't want this. this thing. He doesn't want this man to be a son-in-law. It doesn't, doesn't make a difference. I understand that. But he's, she, but she's, lo, 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 no, now she's an Eishas Ish. Zika's not an Eishas Ish. Zika's not an Eishas Ish. It's, there's a love. Nobody's permitted to marry her, but it's not Eishas Ish. She, good. There's a love. There's an Isser. But factually, but she's not, a, now she's becoming an Eishas Ish. Whoever marries her, she's, she's exclusively his. Right. And this is done without, without the father's permission. When he does care, when he gives her money, right, my mom, that's a machlokis. It's, it's first, it's a machlokis. 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 We'll see. We'll see in a moment. Let's go for it. We'll see the Gemara. Utenan, and we learned in the Mishnah, Kitano mina erisin. If you have a katanum in Erisin, father married her off, and only did Erisin, and then the husband dies, in Osama Maimer. Elamidas of the year. this? Your, your question. You could only do Maimer only if the father accepts the Kedushin. If you give the Kedushin to the katana, it doesn't work. Why? But the Zika there too, right? The Zika. She's a katana. Hanaro, but if she's a Naro, Beimidas. Atzim Beimidas of you. But if she's a, so a Nara, a Ketana, we're saying only the father. If the father accepts the money, then it's the Kedushin is the Kedushin, by the, by the Yavama. Although the Zika. But if it's a Nara, we say not only could the father accept the Kedushin, even the Sheik accepts the Kedushin. So we see by Yavama, even though she's leaving his domain to a greater degree, she's good. So we see not like this. Elit Mahochi Yitma. Omri Vos Rechani, in my time, Rabbi Yochanan, Libit Rabbonan. Kedushin de Midaito. That's interesting over here, Rashi. Kedushin, when you, a woman marries, you need Das, right? She has to be agreeable. De Midato of Evelohik. Kedushin, you're giving up something. You're giving up something. So therefore, you need the intent of the father and not. Yershin Bal Korcho, Beti Benovio. Hear this. When you give up, let's say I sell a piece of property, who's the one who has to be involved in the process? The one who owns the property. Of course, he has to transfer the property out. By Kedushin, who's, tra who's, who's doing the transferring? The father, right? He, he is the bailim. He is the one who is in control of the Kedushin. Get, what's get? You have no say in the matter. It says what? It's afil bal korcha. It's irrelevant what the father thinks, what the, what the daughter thinks. So therefore, because it's bal korcha, therefore, the father is, is, is irrelevant. Sir Harry. Maimer de Midaito. So he says, 
One second, one second. He says, the Gemara is going to say ultimately, because it's, we'll see, it's going like Rebbe. I just want to point out one thing. We have a second before we start. You know, there's a famous run in, in Kedushin, in, in Nidorim, that what is Kedushin? Kedushin, when I sell you a piece of property, everybody agrees, I'm transferring my ownership rights. Ked, what is Kedushin? Ra, the run says in, in Nidorim, Mafkeres Atzmo. She's like allowing yourself to be taken. She's not participating in the Kedushin. There's no ho barriers. You could marry me. She's not resisting. She's not objecting. Because she allows herself, she can be married. Rashi says, oh, here seemingly not like the Ran. The Be'inun Das Makne. You need the intent of the Makne. So it seems to be by Kedushin, not like the Ran of Kedushin. And it's Dorim. She's Makne, even Kedushin, she's giving herself over. This has to do with, with something we discussed in that base on the base. To be continued.